Eligibility Requirements, Part 2, Clinical Services. Each COC accredited cancer program must ensure access to multidisciplinary services that cover the full scope necessary to diagnose, treat, rehabilitate, and support patients diagnosed with cancer. In addition, prevention and early detection services are offered to the community. The state-of-the-art clinical services provide pre-treatment evaluation, staging, treatment, and clinical follow-up for patients diagnosed with cancer seen within the program for primary, secondary, tertiary, or end-of-life care. The available services may be provided on-site or by referral with other facilities or agencies. E6, Diagnostic Imaging. This service is provided on-site or by referral. The specific services for diagnostic imaging are identified in the SAR. There are policies and procedures in place to guide the safe performance of all diagnostic examinations, either on-site or at referral locations. E7, Radiation Oncology Services. All radiation treatment service locations, either on-site or by referral, must be accredited or follow standard QA practices, patient and machine-specific QA. Recognized accrediting organizations are American College of Radiology, ACR, American Society for Radiation Oncology, ASTRO, or American College of Radiation Oncology, ACRO. If not accredited, radiation treatment locations must provide documentation describing the patient-specific and machine-specific QA practices. The program will complete the SAR and at time of survey, provide a copy of the accreditation certificate, letter of attestation, or other documents supporting compliance with this requirement. E8, Systemic Therapy Services. Systemic therapy includes the administration of chemotherapeutic, biologic, and immunotherapeutic agents given to treat a malignant disease by parenteral or oral route. The program ensures that a policy or procedure guides the safe administration of systemic therapy, which is provided on-site, at facility-owned locations, or those supervised by members of the facility's medical staff, physician offices. There are three essential features needed to create a safe environment. A nursing staff with knowledge and skills to provide specialized care. Properly appointed facilities able to provide specialized care. Policies and procedures specific to cancer patients receiving specialized systemic therapy in these areas. It is required that all areas providing systemic therapies for malignant disease are able to document that these policies and procedures are in place and followed. Standards and guidelines such as ONS, ASCO, or NCCN are used to guide policies and procedures. Sites where systemic therapies are given may include the following, on-site or facility-owned locations, locations contracted by the facility, physician offices, if physician is member of medical staff. Annually, the program completes the SAR, identifies sites where systemic treatment is provided as noted, and provides copies of the policy or procedure or letter of attestation for the locations. E9, Clinical Trial Information. There is a policy or procedure defining how the program provides clinical trial information to patients. Clinical trials are an important part of cancer care. Cancer programs can empower patients by providing them with clinical trial information, which can enable them in making informed decisions, participate in their care, and contribute to advances in evidence-based medicine. The program will provide a copy of the policy or procedure stating how clinical trial information is provided to patients. E10, Psychosocial Services. There is a policy or procedure in place to ensure that cancer patients can access psychosocial services. These services are essential to patients, families, and caregivers at every point along the cancer continuum. The available services should address the needs that arise when a cancer diagnosis is made. Physical, psychological, social, spiritual, financial. These services can be available on-site or by referral. 
Patients must be made aware of the availability of these services. The use of services is monitored. The SAR will require the program to identify the psychosocial services and indicate if they are provided on site or by referral. The program will provide the policy or procedure addressing this requirement. E11 Rehabilitation Services there is a policy or procedure addressing access to rehabilitation services on site or by referral. The challenge of coping with activities of daily living impacted by cancer diagnosis or treatment may require rehabilitative services. The policy or procedure will identify the specific services provided to assist patients with goals such as resuming normal activities, returning to work, or adjusting to a new normal. The SAR will require the listing of rehabilitative services offered either on-site or by referral and the referral locations. In addition, the program will provide a copy of the policy or procedure. E12, Nutrition Services. The program has a policy or procedure addressing access to nutrition services on-site or by referral. Safe and effective nutrition is essential throughout the cancer continuum, which includes cancer prevention, throughout treatment, and into survivorship. Nutritional deficits negatively impact a patient's quality of life. The scope of nutrition services will address screening and referral for nutrition-related issues, comprehensive nutrition assessment, nutrition counseling and education, there must be a process in place to ensure patient awareness of and access to these services. The SAR requires the program to identify the scope of nutrition services either on-site or by referral. The program will provide the policy or procedure at time of survey. Summary of Service – Categorized Eligibility Requirements Eligibility requirements are common to all programs these elements are essential for comprehensive cancer treatment and provide physical comfort and emotional support to patients. They promote integrated care across boundaries, whether that care is provided on-site or at referral locations. Thank you for viewing this video on the COC standards and remember to view the remaining videos in this series to further increase your knowledge on the standards. For additional resources, be sure to visit the COC website at www.facs.org slash cancer to access the COC educational portal, best practices repository, and cancer forum.